Okay, it's time to make the pins to go in these things. Of course, there's one for each one. They go into the taper in the bottom of the casting. <clears throat> they have to have these little grooves put in them along the way. And what that does, it captures a washer that sits in between these two. There's a keeper on each side of the washer which pushes the pin up, which you can see right here, there's a keeper on it. And then at the bottom there's the little bit of taper that goes into the bottom seat on the housing part. So we'll make one of these. Actually, we'll make 26 of them, but, but not today. for right now we're going to make one. Do you need this part? Yeah. Okay. My center drill again. Because this material is so lightweight, so flimsy, I'll, I'll show you as I go, but if you push too hard in the middle, it'll actually move it. So you have to have a center on the end of it because it's fairly long. So we'll see as I go. Just go in here enough to hold the center in place. You don't want any more sticking out than you absolutely have to have. The farther it sticks out, the flimsier it gets and it tries to move around on you. There. Now, I got the material in the lathe. It's true, it's centered. I'm going to mark where all this stuff has to go. Now, I know that the tapered seat goes in here about an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to make a mark there. And that will wind up being the end of the pin. And then I'll mark the other end of the pin where it gets cut off. And I'm going to make a mark where the end of the taper is. And then I'm going to make a mark where each one of these circlip grooves are at. So you can see that. First thing I'm going to do, check my cutoff bit here. That's what I use to make the grooves. Make sure I'm a little bit below center. And I'll go down here and I'll mark the end of it where it's going to wind up being cut off in the end. Do is run this in until it just touches my live center here and it stops it. See, right there is where it's touching. And I'm going to mark this so I know exactly where that's at. So, and back it out. Now I'm going to cut the groove for the circlip, and I've marked this so I know how deep to go. And I only know by experimenting that 
go into the chuck like that, which is a live solar up there, it actually gets me fairly close. I'll go down to the next one and do the same thing. You can see it whittles it down in the middle pretty small, so you don't want to push too hard when you're doing this. The space you see between these two grooves is where the washer sits. Start to see me coming up on the mark that I made. Yeah, I'm the same depth as the last one. Normally you'd use the marks on the lathe itself, but some of the marks are worn. It's it's an old lathe, so. You got to do what you got to do. This is another keeper groove for the stock that keeps the pin from falling out of the bottom of the greaser. I'll take it down to the same depth as the rest of them. You have to go slow. It takes a little time to do these. Coming up on the mark again. There we go. Knock it off. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to mark where it gets finally cut off. I'm going to leave it just a hair long. And that's probably good enough to mark that. Now I'm going to come down to the end of the taper and make a mark. So that I know where everything goes. They're all the same all the way. I'm going to go in a little ways, but not as far as I went on the other ones. This is something you got to kind of acquire a feel for here. I'd say that's good enough for that. <clears throat> now I have to change the cutter. Now this is a square cutter. It's 90 degrees. It's sharpened so that it, it'll cut, and I'll show you how this works. Gonna make sure it's <clears throat> first thing to do is make sure it's just a little below center. You probably wonder why I beat on this all the time. If you look down here, there's a half round, kind of a rounded spacer underneath the cutter, and it rocks in this groove. That's how you raise it and lower it. Sometimes tapping on it is the best way to do it. Now I've got to set the angle that I want. I took part of a feeler gauge and cut it off and made a gauge for that. You can hardly see the you can hardly see this uh, taper, but if you look up to the light. You can see the taper. Let's hold that against it. Bring the cutter down. It helps if you tighten the cutter up. Just 
half on it until it matches that taper. Now, now that it's tight, I'll check it one more time just to make sure. Yep. This matches the taper on the reamer that, that the holes get reamed with this taper. <clears throat> well, to do this, this is the way I do it. It's not the way most machinists do it, but you'll see the chip start out narrow and it'll get wider as it reaches the width of the cutter. bit of squeaking means it's not quite below center enough. It needs to be tapped down just a hair. Of course, once you move it, then you want to check this again. Which is good. Just in case. Probably not going to show you how to do this, but I'm going to let it squirt. Cutting oil at this point, and it's, it's kind of helps you to make some rough shape to it. The idea now is to cut it down until the line between the two that I was machining goes away. And there's a fine line between that from what you're cutting being high and being low. So just for a couple seconds there you've got no line. That's where you have to pay attention I guess. Pretty close. What I'll do is I'll take a fine file and go over that just a little bit while it's turning and it'll bring it right in. <clears throat> Got to change the cutter again. I 
I've got a whole collection of them laying here. Just got to get all the right one. I like to use a round tip cutter for smoothing things because it makes a pretty good smooth line. And like always, you got to check to make sure you're a little bit below center at this point. Yep. And this is where you find out whether the, the grooves for the keepers you put in there in the beginning are deep enough. Because if they're not, you wipe them out and then you got to remark them and recut them. power feed the machine takes over and just moves down on its own. I'm doing it by hand because I'm in close area and it's an old machine with a lot of slop in it and I just feel a little bit safer doing it by hand. If something goes wrong I can just stop the process. It's time to find out where I'm at for the diameter on this piece. I've got this one I've made ahead of time. That's the diameter I want right there. Not quite there. It's going to take one or two more cuts. It's going to be a fine cut. What I'll do is start cutting and then I'll measure the first quarter inch or so to see where I'm at. Because if I'm going to wind up small, I'd rather have it on the part that sticks out of the cap.
just went. So now if I go real slow and make it across here, it's the right diameter. Hopefully my clip locations are still there. I'll probably have to go back and deepen them just a little bit. But Since this is the last cut, I'm trying to go pretty slow because it makes the cut a lot smoother. Definitely going to have to deepen those deeper grooves. It's okay, I have to put the parting tool in there to cut the thing off anyway, so since I have it in there, I'll just go ahead and recut those grooves a little bit deeper. stop with this cutter and then I'll put that parting tool back in there again. This should come out where that line disappears now when I get there. It's gone. Okay, change the cutter again. This operation you have to do 27 times for all these pieces I'm making. Making the nuts was about the only thing that you could do in one piece, right? Right. Set it a little bit below center again. Now you really have to be careful because I've whittled off a lot of material here and if I push too hard to recut these grooves, it can actually bend the rod. So what I want to do though is remark those marks with a felt marker so I know exactly where they're at. That's my cutoff point.
good, so I'm going to remark this again. That way I know they're all the same. Go down and cut it off. Well, it, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to show you what I do with that. I'm going to grind it. And this tool I'm using is really made to cut this clear off, but I'm not going to cut it clear off. I'm going to actually cut it down to almost nothing and then break it off. That way I can control where the piece lines up, because if it gets caught in the truck, it'll bend it all up. So that's whittled down quite a bit. I'm going to take this back now. And you can just grab this piece and just break it off. And it leaves this little bump on here. So what I'll do is I'll take that off. Bring down that little bump. And then I'm going to radius that. Now there's my mark for the end of it, and because the countersink went in there a ways, I'm going to grind it off. The only thing left to do with this piece now is to put it back in here and just use a file a little bit and dress up that taper. Be careful doing this, especially without a handle on this thing, because if it caught in the chuck, it could jab it right in your arm. That doesn't feel good. So there's the part. Now if I've measured everything correctly, it should fit through the cap. Should fit through this piece. And there's another one. Only another week to go.